Thank you. Time back on. Let's wrap up. Welcome back to the Captain's Run, episode six is my gut feel. Um, uh, yeah, it's is, it, right. is it episode six or is it episode five? That's not a great start, but we uh, Captain's Run with Angus Brayshaw is the new title of the podcast. Yeah, that's what we should have led with instead of speculating on the days. It's been six or seven episodes we decided. Could be eight. Yeah. Could be eight, and um, it's now officially the name's been changed, so I feel... I feel really honoured and uh, grateful to be here still. So thanks for thanks for having me, Max. That was incredibly weird what just happened then. It feels like one of the cameras shooting just decided to die. But anyway. Um, we've had a mixed start. But we've had back. a mixed start. But it's good to see your heads on. Well, it's not good to see, but I'm glad that you're getting some recognition. Yeah, that's low-hanging fruit. So Apparently there's a graphic. Off. We can't see the graphic. Sure. Yeah. But if you're listening to the podcast, you'd probably see the graphic and your head's there somewhere. So I hope they've gone off a good photo. Yep. Sorry, uh... Sorry in advance for, for the photo. It's probably not going to be good, but uh, is that what you wanted me to say? Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with that. All right. First things first, we've come back from Adelaide. Yes, uh, we have. Recently. Um, I'm getting my days. I reckon today is a Thursday and we got back on a Monday. No, nah, don't, don't throw it to me. I've no idea. Days all meld into one uh, sort of experience. Well, we definitely experience. played. Yeah, I reckon I got that right. Um, so I'll just keep leading with that. Yep. Uh, we played Adelaide on a Wednesday. Yes. And we played North on a Sunday. Yes. And we got the chocolates great. in both games. We did. Um, and they would have bounced back from a disappointing performance against Port. So we did, uh, we did well there. Um, they were, both games were quite similar. Yeah. I think uh, probably we're starting to develop a bit of a brand where we, I mean, obviously we're a contested team, but we grind, grind, grind. And then, well, in certainly the last two games, we've been able to do it for longer than the other team, which is, it's good to see. Um, I think as a fan sitting at home to be able to know what you're going to get from us as a group um, would be would probably be a good thing. Uh, and hopefully the test now will be to do it again and again instead of having weeks like Port Adelaide. Just the way you said, um, I say contested. You said contested? I said, I said contest. You said contest but, and added an So, so you said end. contested. How would you say the word contest? Contest. So... That's interesting, isn't it? Well, how would you say? Would you call exactly? No, I'm not, I'm not having a go at you. I'm just saying it's interesting. How, Canada how, and Canadians. Would you call them Canadians? Can, Canada and Canadian. I would say Canadians. That's do you want to go? To, do you want to go to Canada? No, I would never say it's because it's Canada. There's no I. I just it, I actually didn't hear anything you said after you did that contested thing. Con, contest, contested. Okay, well that's that's it's a, okay. That's a hyperbole, isn't it? <laughs> Um, Jeepers. Um, but no, it was good. I was yeah. just saying that we had, a, we had a good game. I'd like to say us do it for the next couple of weeks. As well. Yep, and we spent four or five nights in Adelaide. I mean, there was a chance we were going to fly back to Maroochydore, mm. then fly back again, but the great state of South Australia the let city us stay of, there. The city of churches the let us stay. The city of churches, they let us stay there for five nights. Yeah, it was good. Um, I like did not Adelaide. do much, I must no, say. It's not a lot to do. We great didn't... curtains in the, in the Adelaide Hotel. Lots of sleep. Felt big, like it was pitch black. Big bed. Yeah, as well. big bed. You would have loved that. I actually had a king suite, yeah, that's which was oh, nice of them. Skipper. Two rooms. To. Two rooms? Yeah. I walked in first yeah. and I'm like, they've forgotten my bed. And then I realized that there was a, there was a door. That's unreal. So, Perks um, of being, that must be nice. Yeah. The, the, the Playford? It was the Playford. The Playford. Yeah? The Playford. Looked they after really us. looked after us until they decided to put our opposition team mm. in the same hotel. That was funny. But they're in the same hotel here yeah, exactly. as well. And we won, so it doesn't really matter as long as we beat them. You know what I mean? It would be uncomfortable for them, I figure. But Just for those playing at home, Melbourne and North Melbourne are sharing a resort at Twin Waters and flew to Adelaide to play. Yeah. Um, and shared a hotel in Adelaide as well, um, which was quite weird. I, I was going for a... I didn't play. I wasn't mm. playing. Um, but I was going for a coffee pre-game and I found myself in not getting the coffee because there was a line of 10 North Melbourne players. Yeah, that would be uncomfortable. And here as well... I reckon I've said more casual, g'day, how you going, mates, than I've ever said in my entire life. Yep. I walk past 10, 10 blokes every single time I go to the meals room, yep. and we have to walk past the Collingwood and North Melbourne meals room to get to ours, so it's, I'm, sick of, I'm sick of it. Darcy Cameron must be on the same schedule as me, because <laughs> I've said hi to him 46 times. So we'll sort something out. Might have, um, to, uh, might have to sort something out. There. Speaking of Darcy Cameron. Let's. Um, rucks. 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 We're talking rucks. That's great. I love rucks. Now, there is still uh, a little cloud over uh, my own fitness. Okay. Um, is this a scoop? What yeah, percent are you at? This is a, this is a scoop. Uh, I have hurt my PCL. That, yep. that scoop that has been led uh, in the media, Victorian media somehow got it. The I, tabloids. I do think that Ben Gibson may right. be the one talking to the Victorian media. We will talk to him a little bit later about his leaking ability, but uh -huh. um, I feel like he's got a bit of cash at the moment. Uh, potentially, but anyway, 
Um, I have done a PCL, partial PCL tear. It's very minor. Okay, that's um, good. Which is good. I was a little bit scared. It was the very last contest in the Adelaide game. So I was a little bit worried that um, when something happens to my right knee that it's something else. But yep. uh, I'm going to train today. Um, really? Which is Thursday. Uh, this Who might, is? This might come out tomorrow, but okay. I'm training today. Uh, by myself. Yeah, I was about to say, we all trained yesterday. Um, with, with the great Darren Burgess. Um, so that'll be, man. that'll be fun. You're, you're in good hands. Um, and then how I go there will lead into what I do in Collingwood. But we are going to miss, uh, unfortunately, what was our number one ruck on the weekend uh, who took on Todd Goldstein in Luke Jackson. Luke Dogger Jackson. Dogger. He has torn his hamstring. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? That's unbelievable. There is rumours that he did it earlier in the game and potentially... Um, powered through it. Powered through, but I'm not sure uh, with that. But he, he did, definitely felt it after the game. Oh, he'll be and missed. And he went and got a scan. And it's big enough for, for, for a four to six week injury. Is it really? Yeah, the David Misson four to six. Wow, wee. That's, uh, that's bad. If it's, Which, if, it's the, if it's the David Misson four to six, he could play this week. True. He could also be out for two years. So we'll cross our fingers. He, he'll be genuinely missed. He's been unreal. He Don't has. Um, so if I don't get up in my session tomorrow... This is where I'm getting to with the ruck talk. And we hate, and can I just preface this? We hate speculation. We love facts we on love this show. We love facts. So I don't have the facts because I'm training today. So I don't, I'm, we're going to let this go through, but only because... The, what's in concrete is yeah. Luke Jackson won't play. Half of it's concrete. This is speculation, which we hate, but... We could get both of our good friends, our good friend, didn't need to plural that, uh, Braden Swampy Proust. Big Townsville Proust. Big Townsville. Up in Townsville, feeling good about himself and a chance to play. He has, uh, he tans for about two minutes a day and he's honestly got the best tan yeah. I've ever seen already. I haven't seen a better looking tan. It's and phenomenal. He's feeling himself at the moment up here. He's back in his native state and, well, I mean, who else would it be? Who, Tommy McDonald's a pinch hitter. He's feeling himself. He's feeling himself. Have you yeah. seen him walking around the joint? Yeah. Shirt. I haven't seen him with it wear a shirt once. Okay. Out in the, he's flapping about in the ocean. Yeah. Like he's, he's back in his natural habitat. So that's all ruck talk. Although this guy's a ruck as well. But going on shirts, there's, there's some wetsuit uh, oh. stuff going on at the moment. <laughs> there is... I mean, we're allowed to surf. One of the things we're allowed to do up in the hub is surf. And yep. um, I actually got my surfboard dropped off by the great guys at Oak Surfboards uh, yesterday. That's a, um, that's, a, that's a little plug. Yep, um, that's a plug. If we had a guy that we, was trained in sound engineering doing our podcast, we could potentially get the ding sound, but he's not trained. So We don't mind plugs on this show. The camera will reveal. Anyway, wetsuits. Um, Tom wet McDonald suits. has gone and brought yeah. himself a wetsuit. Now, this is a joke. And Tom McDonald's a... He's a man of... He's a simple man. He didn't see water for t- the first 21 years of his life. He's a simple man. He's from Eden Hope. There's yeah. no... There's maybe a lake or something. Um, but there's, there's, I think they've got a dam in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, a, not a heap of um, beach front no, no, out there. Right. And he needed to buy a wetsuit. Yep. And, it, gee... I, can we get the photo up? We can get the photo up. We'll, we'll, we'll get the photo up somewhere just, uh, just to see what T-Mac's running. He's but he's wearing a short wetsuit with flippers and a boogie board at, a, at the age of 27. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, he went out there yesterday and there was a couple of five-year-old boys, sons of a few storm boys out there, and um, they looked more comfortable in the waves. Yeah. The uh, big fella, he lost a flipper. <laughs> but there's more, there's, he, more wetsuit, there's more wetsuit talk. Aaron Vandenberg's gone and bought how many? He's gone and bought... So, Vanders is... Um, he's a spender. He's a spender. Yeah. Uh, practical man. Yeah. And bought a wetsuit. And it was... And for those who don't know, they grade wetsuits based on thickness. Um, and so, he's bought a 4-3 wetsuit. <laughs> and that's way too... It's, it's hot up here. It's way yeah. too, that's a Victorian wetsuit. So, he's gone and bought a 3-2, yep. which is a bit thinner. And then... Uh, for some reason, had the same thought as Tom McDonald and has bought a wetsuit top as well. So He's hasn't thinking ha- of running the uh, the bottoms, just the speedos yeah. with the wetsuit top. Yeah, that, that sort of setup. And he actually hasn't been surfing yet, so we'll... Uh, it's got three wetsuits peel, and hasn't you'll, been in the water. You'll peel the tags off the wetsuits one day. <laughs> bought a new surfboard as well, I haven't been surfing, so we've got, we've got to get Vanders out there. Yeah. Um, another little thing that's been going around the hub is the wildlife. Yep, um, we've got a wildlife watch. We, uh, we, we, we made point of the snakes last time on the podcast. No more snake updates, which is good. Well, I feel like this podcast has got the rangers in and potentially yeah. taking care of a couple of snakes. We're, we're, making, we're making things happen. We're making things with the movers and shakers. Yeah, um, I would say so. But there's some more pests. I'm not sure if snakes are pests. pests are they? Uh, no, I'd say they're... Uh, no, they probably come under the pest. Do they, do they? Well, there's more pests. In this context. There's actually a great story of... Um, uh, there's a family coming up in a quarantine hub at the moment. They need a bigger room. 
So Jake Lever has given up. He had a big room. He's given up his big room to go to another room. That's a good story. Anyway, he's moved into this other room. And night one, they have killed nine cockroaches. <sighs> that's not great. Night two, they thought they got rid of them all. Three cockroaches. Yes, that's a big dude decrease. That's a huge drop off. But there's still three. So it's still there. So tonight... Thursday night, it could be there. Could still be cockroaches there, and I wouldn't be sleep. I'd, I would have. I would have. Not a cockroach. I would guy. have gone to Josh Marnie and said, "Mate, Send me it's home. been fun, but I'm leaving the hub." I had a possum pop on my balcony. Is that a pest? That's a pest. Say? Possums are definitely pests. I was sitting out there having a meal with um, Danielle, yeah. and uh, she went inside. Thank God that she actually went inside. Otherwise, there would have been anarchy. Yep. And um, a little possum just jumped on the um, podium. Podium. That's not a podium. What's the thing where you sit in? You, porch. Is your room CQ? Yeah. Interesting. I've got a nice little uh, DJ deck up there. And I sit there and you know, no, but um, a few. But that's the thing, Max. We're, yep. we're in uh, North Queensland and... Uh, I'm actually starting to get accustomed to it. Yeah, it's just the wildlife. It's yeah. the way that happens up here. Just what ask Prusy. What I do wish, so I'm not a great wildlife man. I like... We I know like, that. You hate snakes. I like your recreational dog and that's it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> house, household dog was the word I wanted But I've run That's it recreational right. It's a recreational dog Anyway, I love that so, I don't like much else I like I can't even handle like The kangaroos here And they really? they seem like the nicest people They're not people Nicest animals, nice animals. going around um, But You've the, seen a few boys touch There is a grumpy kangaroo here Yeah That I Teddy Melksham went running towards the other day You're um, joking Yeah, and if that was my son Oof. Teddy's now a kangaroo, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I, I would have been game over. I'm not going over there to save him. Yeah. That's um, crazy. I played golf in the first week uh, up here and I put my ball in the middle of maybe seven kangaroos. Jeez. Lost ball. Yep. Didn't even get it. So, yeah. yeah, I could see it. It was yeah. on the fairway. It was a nice shot. And I still played a lost ball. Yeah. Well, that's probably um, fair enough. So that's where I am at with wildlife. But I'm starting to come accustomed to it. And I wish my parents, maybe at a young age, maybe took you more. To a zoo. Yeah, took me to a zoo or something. <laughs> made me more comfortable with animals. And I think that's what I'll do when I eventually have kids. Although I'm getting a strong list up here. Why, no, mm. why never to have kids? So I can't yeah. wait to take that to Jess. Yeah, she'll love that. Yeah, she'll um, love that. There's a strong list. <laughs> well, kids are also pests in yeah. some We sense. see the highlights with all the kids up here. Yeah, we, we see do. the good stuff. They come to dinners and they're all fun. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, but that's Wildlife Watch done for that's the week. That's Wildlife Watch. Um, we got a great segment that we're releasing today. Um, Are we going with it now? Yeah, we've got a new jingle. So we have the jingle, but yep. the reason why we've got the jingle the way it is is because, well, actually, we'll explain it after. All yeah, right, okay. okay. It's Eddie Langdon. Yeah, yeah. Segment. segment. So what that? That's a throwback to um, our, obviously Ed Langdon, but yep. his favourite band. He's seen Sticky Fingers, the band, live in action. He's bought seven different tickets at yep. seven different occasions to yep. see him live. They're a good band. They're a good band, yeah. but they're not that good. I no. want to thought he's just like <laughs> an indie. That's he's reinventing himself as yep. this indie. So we've um we've gone with that as the segment, the um, jingle, and yep. basically what this is. Would you like to explain the segment? So uh, something comes up about Ed Langdon at least once a week, and it's you always gold, and they, it's gold. So we feel like you, the listeners, should hear the little bit of Ed Langdon gold that comes in uh, once every week. Um, and the the, the, so the the two that have come across our desk this week um, is AFLPA do an unsung uh, heroes award every week. Yeah, and it's a player not in the limelight like yourself that plays a really good game. Yep. Um, and what we're arguing is Ed Langdon is well and truly in the limelight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not he's, an unsung. He's actually a very well sung hero. He's absolutely accurately sung. Yeah. Loudly sung. Loudly and, sung. And can I just say, it's uh, no less sung by himself as well. He's pushing hard for, for it, votes in I've our I've heard um, he's, campaigning he's campaigning for midfield <laughs> votes. So yeah. the midfield vote, a player who's the best midfielder of the week, normally not the guy who gets the most disposals, normally the guy who plays the best role. Yeah, it's a team thing. And Ed Langdon has been campaigning yeah. out here. He's got, he's got Vandenberg's vote. Yeah. And he's got, who else, is it your vote as I well? I think he's got mine every now and then. He just so, he says something that makes me go, yeah, you were good. Yeah, you're so, right. So I don't, I don't want to hear about this unsung hero stuff, Lingers. Um, <laughs> but the second Langdon point yeah. is this what one came across funny. our desk, is he reckons he played FIFA for the first time uh, and, last night. Yeah. Um, and quote when he was playing FIFA because he was probably down 4-0 sure. he said I haven't played FIFA for 11 years 11 years and he's is a 23 year old he's a 23 year old so he hasn't played FIFA since he was 12 was the quote and if you think and he went to Melbourne Grammar they're exactly. playing FIFA they, at that, school that, at 16 you got there before I did they get a PlayStation when every single year the new one comes <laughs> yeah. out he would have had a PlayStation and then a PlayStation <laughs> yeah. 2, 3, 4 and he would have got the prototypes before. he's got every single opportunity to play FIFA and he hasn't played it 
since FIFA 09. And he's got like, all 11 editions lingers. of FIFA since Shut FIFA 09. Shut up, lingers. Yeah. He's got all the games in like a... Gucci <laughs> bag sitting somewhere in your room. Shut up. I'm sick of it. I can't wait for next week's segment. Oh, that's, um, that's we've a, given you two good ones. That's um, a great start. But we're going to our next segment. Uh, straight in. Segment to segment. Um, this one's also one of my favourites. Uh, I've had to say that because he's getting a little bit upset with what I normally say. But yes. It's Benny Gibson. He's got the news. He's got the news. That was very... Kind words. as the first time ever. There has, a, has been some really positive feedback via Twitter. Actually, yeah. everyone is enjoying this segment. I think it's top of the list. So that's good. How's yeah. that? So we give him a little pump up, and then he just take, then he give him an inch, it. and you just take him off. So next week, guess what will happen next time we introduce you, Benny Gibson? <laughs> I'm not sure about your injury speculation earlier. You yeah. told me last week this is a fact based podcast. Yeah, we so did. I'm not going to touch on injury. I'm not going to touch on selection. I yeah. think there's too many grey areas. Yeah. Uh, what we know is Alice Springs round 14 versus St Kilda. Yep. Sounds like something you said a while ago. I did allude to that. Maybe yeah. it was fact. Uh, and then Cairns two games against Sydney and Fremantle at some point. So yep. I'm going to give it to you, Max, to speculate. Yep. What do you think the remaining uh, fixture looks like? I'm not going to get involved in this. You I don't like speculation. You can speculate. Um, well, I think it obviously goes Collingwood, Western Bulldogs, St Kilda. Yes, That's I'm happy in with concrete. that. You're happy yep. with that. Now, and now. then we go to Cairns and play Sydney and Fremantle. And then we come back to Melbourne and we'll play GWS. And then we'll finish off the last game of the home and away season out of all teams will be Melbourne Essendon put at the end of the year. Okay. I didn't hear any of that after St. Kilda, but I assume, I assume it was all... Um, and I, and what I said earlier in the podcast, thinking uh, Gibson may leak stuff to Victorian sources, I'd expect to see that in the paper tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, uh, who's, your, who's your biggest leak? Well, Who do you go these to? days with social media, nothing holds to the paper. So yeah, yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's a good point. 10.30 at the moment, so maybe That's 10.45. probably out of 10.45, beautiful. I'm not going to go with any more news because I was set with a little task a couple of weeks That's ago. That's interesting because your segment is... Um, the news. The yeah. news segment, but we're going to just run with... Um, cans and speculation and yep. anyway well yep. given I was given a fair warning that the news was no good we've brought in six boxes of shapes okay this is what yeah, we're all here for this is what we're all here for so, so sorry six six so this is our first talking point let's yeah, yeah. we've got the originals six boxes the elephant Where's in the, the room seventh? the elephant in the room is that nacho cheese is not an original that is what, how long has it been on the on the shelf so for? that's the talking point so as you can see here all the originals have originals written on the oh, box. Oh, nacho cheese doesn't have that. Nacho cheese doesn't have it. In fact, I bought it from Coles. Uh, yeah. um, it's got to be an essential trip, and that was. Yep. Um, I forgot cheddar, but I went back in to get it. Have to. And nacho that is cheese essential. didn't have originals. So we've got six. We've got, uh, what are they? Savory pizza, cheese and bacon, cheddar, barbecue, and chicken crimpy. We're going to do a taste test, and we're going to order them. Did they need them. to put crimpy on the end? They... Or could you just say could have got away with it? Every, got everything away with else it. apart from cheese and bacon's a one worder. Think about how much, and how that's many, an adjective. Yeah, like how many boxes have they printed with crimpy on it? They could have saved so much money. Yeah, that's just my opinion. But. So this is one that the fans can get involved with. We yeah. want to hear your order. So mm. I don't know if we've got time to get a ta do a taste test. I bought them. We'll do that for off that air. reason. Yeah. So we can do it off air. I've definitely got time at some point today. I, yeah. yeah, I want to hear your six. Can I just say before we jump right into it? I've got I've got a sixth that I'm comfortable with and I've got a one that I'm comfortable with but I look at I'm sitting here I've put a bit of time really? into this list you're not a great shape eater then if you haven't no, no, sorted I, it but, out but here's the thing like I've got five I've got, the, I've got the order but looking at them right now like it's very close for the second spot like I keep <laughs> in my head just like there's swimming. a different mood for a different shape I know and that's the thing they're all so contextually brilliant in their own way but I um I have a list have you got yours Max? yeah I've, I 100% have mine the only issue with my one is my one's very like it'll be everyone's six, so yeah. that's like I like to be different, but yeah, I'm um, the guy who's different sometimes. But my Ugh. one has horrible shapes, yeah, and right. they're quite hard to eat. That's the only disappointing thing of my one. But. See, my five could just as easily. I'm changing it, okay? Well, gonna, let's go with six. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to challenge the producer to actually get up a little graphic maybe for each of us to order them. So, we're going to go do you want to go six to one or one to six? We'll go six to one. Okay. I like six. Uh, so, yeah, six to one. what is your least favorite? My least favourite uh, and easily least favourite was cheddar. Yeah, cheddar's, cheddar's a joke. I don't know who made cheddar, but... Be careful because this could be Gibson's... I'm going savoury. Yeah, see, that's, 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 that's quite topical. But anyway, we'll get there, we'll get there when I get to one. Where will, won't yeah. We? yeah, okay, so cheddar... Go five. So, yeah, okay, so you obviously like cheddar. I'm going cheddar five. I okay. think savoury doesn't, doesn't add much. It okay. doesn't offer much. Uh, well, so he's gone cheddar five. Jeez, what am I going to go to five? I'll go to, I'll go to, I'll go to chicken five. I'm going to say chicken as well, five. 
Wow. We're very similar people, uh, aren't we? We're going to deviate. This I feel like from boring. here we're deviating. We're deviating. This we're segment coming. is losing interest quickly. <laughs> number four. Uh, number four for me is pizza. Savory for mine. I've gone barbecue. Yeah. Oh, that is, that's not well. true. It is true. Barbecue is in everyone's top three. It's not. It was. It was out of my top three a few seconds ago. Really? That's okay. how. But draw. that's what. But what I'm saying, like any, there's a few stiff, few stiff flavors here. Uh, three for mine uh, is barbecue. Barbecue. You go on chicken crimpy. Uh, interesting. Three. So we've all got cheese and bacon in the top two. Yeah. yeah. But and, and it is and my then, it is my number two. Have a different one for it's one. My number two as well. Cheese and bacon's my two. Cheese and bacon's my two. And, and now and let's consistent. talk about this is what it comes down to. And it's interesting that we've all got different ones. This is a good discussion yeah. point. I'm a pizza guy. At one. I'm a pizza as well. Get out of here. And, I'm a, and I'm a You're savory a, man. So let's talk savory because yeah. I I see that and I think the um, problem with savory is it's a nice burgundy box. It is. It's a beautiful color. Yeah. Gorgeous burgundy yeah. color. An issue I find is it often like. Stabs the roof of your so mouth. So that's the issue that I said before. They have yeah. bad shapes. They do have bad shapes, yeah. and it you can, don't get that with crimpy, do you? Your mouth, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, but I, I like the taste. I'm boring, so I'm an original Doritos man. Like, like I'm like at, a look at that. That's just come out. That's gonna yeah, stab that, you yeah. no matter what. Yeah, you got to be careful with the way so, you chew, don't you? Yeah, but you yeah. know, I, I don't. I don't want that. Stress. But at least there's so many different shapes where crispy chicken. Well, why was on my crimpy. six? Crimpy, crimpy and cheddar. Tend to have the same shapes. Yeah, okay. So there's at least some variety. You, you want a variety of shape. You don't care about. No, I like I like variety of shape. Okay, well that's good. I mean, I, I do, I'm, a, I'm more of a flavor guy as opposed to a shape guy. Uh, that's what savory has come one because it's a horrible savory shape. Doesn't really but manage to have much flavor. There's no there's not a whole lot of flavor. Right, well, this yeah. packet's open, so I'll probably have to get into. Yeah, it. I yep. think we probably should. Should we get like a send in? So pizza's send in. both your ones. Yeah, yeah that's been, amazing. I think Nacho Cheese would have given it a run. Oh, if I can't Nacho's... wait to hear the audiences. Yeah. yeah, can we? Yeah, throw out to the audience. Absolutely send yours in. I want to see if there's any. If surely there's some savoury fans out there. There has yeah. to be more people than just. There'll me. be. I tell you what, there will be, which is disappointing, but there will be a few. Oh, Maxi Gorn says it's number one, so it I'm going to throw it you up there. You, know, you don't bring our loyal podcast supporters <laughs> down to bandwagons. <laughs> well, I'm just bandwagon. sending a warning out there. If I see any savouries up there, I'm going to be asking questions. So, I mean. It's just not. It's doesn't. Every other flavor has got something. It's something different. You know what I mean? Not so much. Anyway, but that's, that's, just, a, that's a unlike great, this segment. This offers plenty. That's a great segment. Um, you're gonna have to bring something else next week now because yeah. it seems like you bring something more than news, and you've set yourself a tough thing to follow. So. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, anyway, we'll be back after this. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. And we're back. Uh, the captain's run with Angus Brayshaw. Uh, for one of our favourite segments, Max, this one, isn't it? Easily our favourite, yep. And uh, we've gone deep into the archives uh, for one of our favourite pass players, both of ours. Was and, it on uh, your phone or my phone? Uh, could have been I either. think we both have his number. Yeah, both yeah. play with him. Yeah. Uh, and is now in the city of churches. We just we've just been there. Uh, yeah. Jack Trengrove, thanks for coming on. Tren, thanks for having me, boys. It's an absolute honour. Former captain Jack Trengrove. It's good to hear your voice. Yeah, no, nah, thanks. It's good to hear you, boys. And I did see that you've recently been into the beautiful city of churches and yep. realised all the great things that Adelaide has to offer. So <laughs> yeah. no doubt enjoyed your time and. Uh, Sort of sad to go back to the Gold Coast. I'm going to I'm going to stop you there. Not a lot. Um, <laughs> not a lot was on offer. Um, I, I I do want to be careful because I want to thank the South Australian government for letting us yeah, they uh, were continue terrific. our the season. The government were unreal. Yes. Uh, but apart from the Playford Hotel, we didn't really get to see too much, which is a shame. So much to offer, isn't there, trainers? There's so much stuff. I'd love to take you out to the Barossa and show you beautiful wine oh. regions. <laughs> Maybe next time. First things first. What I want to get off straight off. It's been. As soon as I thought, let's get Trenners on, mm -hmm. this has been... He, you own a house in Elwood. You brought it many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and Trenners uh, rents that house out now to a few Melbourne boys, which includes yourself, Angus. Yeah, so I'm you're, the, we're I'm speaking on, to your landlord. We I'm should have introduced list. it as your landlord. Yep. Um, and also Aaron Vandenberg. Uh -huh. And you've had multiple other people go through there at different times. We've had a few um, drop-ins, but Vanders and I have been fixtures for the last... It would be going on two years now. Um, and the main one, the main point I want to raise, because I'm not sure if Trenners knows, um, <laughs> but uh, at the end of year festives, um, one year, Jack, uh, we we got carried away a little bit and we ended up back at your house um, and made a little bit of structural damage um, that we? I think Vanders has potentially fixed up. 
Um, what do you do? I just wanted to know if you if you if you've heard about this as as the landlord trend. Yeah, well, I thought this uh, whole discussion was just a bit of a, a catch up and a, a kind of <laughs> landlord sort of update yep. on how the house is going. But it's <laughs> obviously vacated at the moment because you blokes are up north. No, yeah, no, no. We've got um, Vanda's, Vanda's uh, better half and a friend uh, house sitting. So they're taking good care of it. They've done the gardens. So okay. they're, in, they're in good yeah. shape. And uh, it's, all, it's all in order at the moment, Trenner. So nothing, nothing to see here, mate. It's all good. Well, that is great to hear. The rent is still coming in, which is always a bonus. Yeah. Were you were you aware that but, you had two people that weren't written down on the sheet to be living there living there? Uh, no, I wasn't. So that's, 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 that's interesting. Um, I'll go back and digest that all, and I'll come back <laughs> with a, um, some thoughts. But yeah. I did receive some Snapchats um, during that festive season that you speak of, and was aware that there was um, a bit of damage, but as long yeah. as it gets fixed, all, all I'm fixed. pretty happy. It's all above board as well. We're all having it's just a bit of fun. And uh, yeah, exactly. I'm happy to move on from this yeah, topic we'll pretty on. quickly we'll because we'll uh, we'll too we'll much deeper on. and I'll be in a bit of trouble. But um, you've, uh, you're still playing footy, Trenners? Be, or... I yeah. am, yeah. So I'm playing for the Prince Alfred College Old Collegians in the ah. amateurs over here in, in Adelaide. And we were sort of travelling along and going okay up until I... Bloody busted my thumb uh, two weekends ago and find myself with a ruptured ligament in my thumb that I had to have reattached. So I thought walking away from the professional football side of things meant less injuries, but I've managed to find myself in a cast again, which is... uh, Not much fun. You just love the surgery room way too much. Is it called the surgery room? No, uh, the operating theater. room. The operating theater. theater. Sorry, the, the surgery. Yeah. Let's call no, it. Let's, just... let's call it the surgery room. I kind of like that. It's got a ring to it. <laughs> yeah, the old general anaesthetic. Um, how long? Yeah, you, how long are you? Uh, how long are you in the cast for? So I've got it for two weeks. So I get it off next Tuesday, which I'm Stop cannot it. wait for. And then yeah. I've got a little plastic one to put on for another month or so. But yeah. I'd rather a hand than a foot. Put it that way. At least I can still walk yeah. around and run. Well, that, that was the next point. Obviously, uh, especially your Melbourne part of your career was haunted with uh, navicular injuries, which is... Um, we don't speak that word. Don't no. mention the word navicular. Well, you're not allowed to say it around here as well because Matty Egan um, uh, is, a, is a coach here, so he doesn't like that word being said either. But some had terrible injuries that didn't really stop when you went to Port Adelaide, but they were just slightly different injuries. I mean, you, you, you got an infected quad and miss weeks on end. Yeah, I know, which is the ironic thing. Growing up, I, I think I might have missed a half once with a sore calf. Yeah. <laughs> so I've never had an injury in my life. Um, and then, yeah, the foot, the navicular at Melbourne, came to port, had a beautiful run of no injuries, and then suddenly I had a straight boot in a tackle that caught the top of my, or bottom of my quad, which got infected and... Um, yeah, apparently nearly lost a leg, some would say. <laughs> but um, no, I missed eight weeks of that with a bloody big shark bite on my uh, quad, which was frustrating. But yeah. hey, that's all a part of it, boys. Uh, you know what it's like. That's part of the journey. That, injuries. that is footy. That part is of the footy. journey. Speaking of uh, the journey, the bigger journey, you're getting married soon. I've got, I've got some good mail. Wow. That, uh, that you're on, on the queue to get married. Yeah, I did. Um, I did drop the knee just before COVID hit, and the plan is to get married, but we might not be able to given the current circumstances. We're supposed to be going down to the lovely Mornington Peninsula yep. March next year to do the day. Surely but, we're um, good by March. Surely we're good by March. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to be allowed back in the state by then. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Well, I mean. Hopefully, uh, we can get the season up and going in April next year or March next year. So, um, I dare say your wedding may be allowed. Might be capped at a hundred. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, want... I know. You might not make the list. Sorry, Max. <laughs> oh, that's all right. If I don't, Angus definitely. Yeah, won't, so I'm, uh, I'm not holding my breath for the hundred. The hundred shortlist. But um, uh, congratulations from the podcast. Yeah, we're, we're happy for you, mate. Um, uh, thanks for that, guys. Really yeah, appreciate. I it. mean, you're you're a, you're a big fan of the podcast, I hear. So um... yeah, man, we know you've been waiting for our uh, blessing, and <laughs> you've officially got it. So congrats, yeah. and uh, my fingers are crossed. I'm touching all the wood wooden things here for your wedding to get up. Uh, just, oh, thank you. We do have a little bit of background noise, trainers. We're in a we're in the kids' playroom. We couldn't find too many other spots to do mm. our podcast, so we got a little bit of background. Beautiful. Uh, Whose child is that making noise in the background? It's probably uh, a, it could, a Nathan Jones or a Jake Melksham. It could be one of four hundred. There's so many here. There's more than yeah, players. Yeah, kids getting around. Um, now we can't do a, an interview with you without speaking about uh, the better Trengrove. Um, to- <laughs> Tokyo has been postponed a year. She's still a chance to bring home a medal. Uh, at the Olympics? 
Yeah, well, it's actually worked in her favour, to be honest. So Jess had a little uh, boy back in November last year, little Billy. He's an absolute legend. Yeah. Um, so she was always going to be pushing it to get to Tokyo 2020. So the delay has actually helped her. But to be honest, Max, I can't see Tokyo 2021 going ahead at this rate, uh, given yep. you know we can't even get into Victoria, let alone Japan at the moment. So, yep. um, yeah, she's fighting fit and running ridiculous times again. So um, hopefully she's around the mark when it comes comes to it. But it's about finding an event to qualify in. I think that's going to be the hard part. Yeah, she would she would beat me in a three-kilometre time trial at and go run 39 more kilometres. Like, that's how yeah, quick... Yeah, so what, what, would, what would your uh, K split be for a 3K? Well, let's, well, let's, say, three... yeah, let's say I do one in about 10.20. Yeah. Which is generous. <laughs> no, which is normal. That's that's yeah. That's... So you know, three twenty-five or something like that. Yeah, splits. yeah. Yeah, I think Jess' her best marathon. I think she was running splits of about that for forty-two of them. That's so. crazy. I don't even know what that to hurts. say to that. Yeah, it's pretty scary. <laughs> but can she? Mate, mate, can I'll she win it, a ruck contest? Yeah, let's toss a ball up and <laughs> see who wins the ruck. <laughs> Yes, you you probably yeah. I don't think she'd be able to take a tackle all that well. And, um, yeah, I think you guys might have her covered there. All right, just uh, got to catch her first. <laughs> <laughs> now we were we were drafted together, Jack. Uh, Two thousand nine, yeah. the Super Draft, Scully, Trengrove, <laughs> Gizmets, oh, uh, Tap yeah. Scott. Uh, it was really was the Super Draft. Just uh, obviously, um, I don't want to make this all about me, but I will. Um, <laughs> when we. When we first got to the club, what odds do you reckon I would have been that I would have been the last one left in that super draft? Yeah, you were long. You were long on to that stage. <laughs> um, Fitzy was well ahead of you, I think. Fitzy yeah, was ahead of me. Yeah. No, it's um, quite funny how it's all ended up. But you still got Skulls, remember? He's still ticking yeah, along, Skulls is so. still ticking along. And you and Jack just finished up. You and Fitzy just finished up. Yeah. Uh, we... Yeah. So, no, nah, it's... Um, yeah, the so-called super draft wasn't so super in the end. But, when, um, yeah, we lost. We had a good time, and we, we tried our guts out. But um, unfortunately, the likes of the Brayshaws, Petrakas, Olivers came and just sort of took over from us. Yeah, we lost Jordy Gisbert just a little bit early for the super draft. He was uh, two years in, I think. We lost him, and then we started going downhill pretty quickly from there. Yeah, we did, but. Um, Anyway, that's in the past. Yes, correct, correct. We don't want to get hung up on that. Um, yeah. And I've got a, I've got another one. Are you, are you a Port Adelaide supporter or a Melbourne supporter? No, I'm um, red and blue through and through. I was there for eight years. Um, still have some great mates in yourselves running around there, and uh, definitely a D supporter. But at the same time, got some good mates at the Power who I've got a very soft spot for. So. Yeah. If it's a D's port granny, it's going to be hard. Uh, I'm probably going to lean towards the D's, but uh, good man, if you good. boys aren't there, I'll, I'll be on for the power. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, you can stay on the podcast. We won't kick you off. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? So, Trenners, I was uh, I was on the toilet yesterday. I do all my business on the toilet, and I'm reading through my emails, and I get one from the Elite Lanyon Fund, uh, which is yes. your, uh, your finance thing that's going on. Tell everyone what you're doing outside of footy. Yeah, so um, at the moment, I've gone from pulling boots on every day to now put the suit on and walk into work. It's quite different, but when you've got a thumb injury, it, it kind of helps. But I'm working for Lanyon Asset Management, where a fund manager uh, managed a little over 350 mil, so nearly at Dawny's wage. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so I've created a, a fund specifically set up for elite passing present athletes so the they have, elite do they have to be a, fund. they have to be elite yeah I, interesting yeah. you got the email then Gus yeah I don't know how I snuck onto the yeah. shortlist yeah no nah, it helps that you're a, a tenant but uh, <laughs> yeah so I guess the idea is to everyone's very comfortable in the athlete space to go buy a house and all those sorts of things but um, everyone's a bit scared to sort of put money into the share market and um, it's a no-brainer for me and you know you get compounding interest working on your side and grow the grow the money pit um, a lot longer for into the future so that you know when you two are starting out your families and having kids and having to pay for school fees you've got some money there to put towards it so yeah um, that was the idea of it and it's off to a great start we're coming up to the one year birthday at the end of this month and um, there is an investor um, 
at the other other end of this phone call at the moment in Max Gorn, and uh-huh. he's a happy investor. Is that is Pretty that correct? Happy, Max? Yeah, we've had a good month. Um, yeah. it's, it's a long project though, so I'm not I'm not gonna. Um, congr- it is. Not Don't gonna get ahead of yourself. Not gonna congr- congratulate you yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, is- but I'd I'd love um, the Great Angus Bay sort of tip some money. Well, I'm a, stage, I'm a so. I'm a studying finance as well at the moment, compounding interest and equities at the moment. So what I'm up up yeah, to. So uh, yeah. I've so read is, your language. This read- is this is not where I wanted the podcast to go, but I'm glad we're doing it. Is is your life currently like um, the Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> Very far from it. Okay, but I was just you checking. can believe that. Oh, yeah, probably that. <laughs> Are you at the start where he just meets yeah. Jonah Hill? So He's, you're, you're yeah. potentially you're yeah. potentially about to go into this phase. Yeah. So you haven't met yeah. Matthew McConaughey yet? Flying Not choppers. yet. Yeah. <laughs> Mark the day. This is the day. The day <laughs> when will we meet Matthew McConaughey? I'm interested in that. <laughs> yeah. I can't. The only thing <laughs> the only thing holding us back at the moment is COVID. Otherwise. Me and Maddie would be best mates. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I've taken enough of your time. Uh, we've been trying to get you on for a few weeks. You're a very, very busy man. So thanks for jumping on. Uh, just out of curiosity, what's your favorite shape? Favorite shape? Oh, I'm a chicken crimpy man. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's thrown a curveball. I had that at three. That's I had, I had, I had three. the five. That's is that curve. controversial? Yeah. Or is, uh... It's thrown a curveball. Gaunt, you know how Gawney likes being different? So he had his order oh, was all over the shop. Yeah. I had savory. What? Oh, of course he did. I know, it's so simple. <laughs> anyway. All right. Anyway, back. thanks for having us. Uh, thanks for having us. We, we yeah, had thanks for coming on, mate. Thanks <laughs> for coming on. <laughs> oh, I'm getting these hyperboles all wrong. Oh, yeah. Max uh, doesn't really anyway. work very well. That's okay. I, I still haven't com- worked out what hyperbole means. Thanks, thanks for coming Jeremy. on, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for having me, boys. Um, much appreciated. All the best for the rest of the season. Um, hope you boys are getting up there and playing some finals footy again. I can't wait to watch. Legend. Good man. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Cheers, uh, that was Jack Trengrove, former captain. Uh, Great guy. Number two draft pick. Um, would have been number three if I never did my knee. Great uh, landlord. I would as well. have obviously gone pick one. I've just moved straight past that. Great um, landlord. Great landlord. Uh, you have some questions to answer about who's currently living in that house that he doesn't know, but um, and I'm sure no Victorian government people listen to the podcast, so it should be right from that point. Um, we're coming back with a Melbourne supporter, which I'm very excited for. Um, we're quite. Known Melbourne supporter, we'd I would say. say so. Yeah. So back after this. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over a hundred years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the D's. All right, welcome back to the Captain's Run with Angus Brayshaw. Uh, one of our favourite times, uh, favourite segments is to, is to get around the Melbourne supporters. Yep. Um, chuck in a trivia, yeah. see if they can win some some uh, goodies. Random selection this week, and you wouldn't believe who we've pulled out of that. Yeah, I, I uh, I'm not sure if we're calling him to ask him questions about his career, or he's talking <laughs> about uh, Melbourne Football Club. But we got uh, Australian Test legend. I legend. say legend because he averaged over fifty. Absolutely. Um, he also only played a, a handful of games, probably more if he was a New South Welshman. But uh, we got Bradley Hodge. Hodge, are you there? Yeah, g'day, Max. You well, Angus? All good? Yeah, we're ticking along, mate. Ticking along. Thanks for coming on. No, thanks, Pat. I appreciate that. I, I, I really do enjoy those statistics because the reality <laughs> is if I had played any longer, I would have been probably shit out and yeah. out. So it's, it's not a bad thing. So I take that average and, and I'm happy about it. But uh, look, it's good to speak. I, I, you guys are obviously... Up north, doing it well. We're doing it tough down here. Yep. Um, but uh, and I see Angus's father most times getting yep. the coffee early morning in Black Rock. So, Sticky yeah, we, We're keeping things real down here. Have they put the wall up at the in Bayside yet? Making sure no one gets in. Not yet. Um, the yeah, the passport. Yeah, the um, you got to get your passport to get in. Yeah, yeah, that's why it should be. Um, but it's it's pretty good. Look, uh, it's a lovely part of the world to live. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we're excited that uh, the demons are up and about playing some good footy. Yeah, uh, and more to the point, AFL is up and running, which is cool. Which leads me to my first my first question: um, Why why demons? What's 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 the background well, there? Yeah, it's a family history actually. My father was supporting. Uh, he was a demon fan. Yep. Um, unfortunately, my son for the moment has jumped off the bandwagon. Yeah. Uh, so I need to sort of coach him back. He uh, he jumped to the Tigers about two years ago because they were winning, I suppose. Yep. Um, which is his, which is which is which is fair this. enough. He said that you know in your whole generation of life, uh, Dad, you've never seen them win. So that's a good <laughs> point, son. Yep. I, I take that on board and I respect what you've got to say. But I tell you what, 
Oh. When we do win some, the party is going to be phenomenal, <laughs> and you're going to miss out. So bad luck <laughs> for your for your whole life. You haven't seen us win, or is that well, not is that, win a premiership? Yeah, right. Not yeah, a premiership. Right. Seen you win many a times, but not a premiership. Did you Did you make your way down to the two thousand granny? Yes, I was there. Yeah. Um, was that the ninety three point loss? Was it ninety three points? Yeah, it was something like that. Well, the prelim yeah. was the prelim was good at least. Yeah, I, I was actually. Um, I mean the. the for, as a demon supporter, the most heartbreaking moment, and I was at this game, uh, was when Gary Bucanara got that 15 meter penalty and yeah, slotted it through. Yeah. I've never cried so much in my life. Oh, I'm serious. Like, watching that ball <laughs> sail through, and it was a horrible effort to. You know, I mean, that car park at VFL Park was awful to try and get out. Yeah, yeah, it would And have been. trying to exit that car park with every Melbourne supporter crying, it was a devastating weekend. That's an amazing memory. Yeah, that's un- well. I mean, it's probably been scarred into you. You're never going to forget that. I wouldn't have thought. True. Um, True. Oji, cricketers travel all the time and uh, for long periods of time. So we're yeah. hubbing up here. How long? It's been seven weeks. We've been we've up got, here for seven so far. I think we've yeah. got six more at this rate. Um, you got what, what's uh, you know, as an elder statesman now of the game? Um, what tips you got for hubbing? Hubbing well. Well. It's interesting. I was more excited to, you know, understand how you guys are actually coping with it. We're sort of used to it. And uh, I guess in footy, you know, and cricket, you're always in your little bubble and you stay within your comfort zones. Um, But, you know, I've been watching the Instagram and there's some, looks like there's some serious ping pong going on. Yep. Yeah. Um, You know, the the physio room becomes a beacon of activity. It does. The physios, Uh, the physios know the most about everybody. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And that's, you've got to be careful of that because that's, that's, that's Goody's little beak of an information. Correct, right there, correct. You know? I've noticed our physio talks to Goody a lot. Really? So we've yes. got to be careful there. Okay. okay. Uh, no, that's, that's the information train. So <laughs> not that he's spewing it out, the physio, whoever he is, yeah. uh, but you know, that's Goody's intel. He'll find out what's going on around the group. It's always a, a good place. Yeah. Um, yeah, what do you find? I mean, it's, I guess from our point of view, it's a little bit different staring at the plasterboards in Bangladesh and India compared to Correct. the sun rolling in and the surf rolling in at the Queensland there. So yep. you're a little bit ahead of the times there. But, yeah, you know, I mean, I mean you, the good thing is, is you get to spend a lot of time with your teammates outside of training. Yeah, so, that's that's easily yeah. the biggest bonus we found. Yeah, and you have your little clicky units, but you often find a lot more about people, you know, being away from your actual home. So. Yep. Yeah, it's a good experience for you guys. I hope you're enjoying it. Yeah, it is. It is really good. Um, I mean, we're we're in a similar similar restrictions to Victoria. Um, we get to do a little bit more like surf and and, and play golf, which is obviously um, we're very grateful Pretty for. Pretty big win, yeah. But the, I, we're we're isolating with 140 people, where you're probably isolating with maybe one or two or three. I don't not sure how many people you're in the house with, but. Um, that's the lucky bit. We've got a lot of people around us. Yeah, so yeah, it's crazy. Who's the pig on the buffet? Buffet is always an interesting. Well, he, one. you have one guess. Have well, one his guess. nickname is Pig, so you can have <laughs> one guess. I uh, don't know his nickname. Um, I'm trying Just, to think who Pig would be. He's actually strategically because uh, we have a meeting before dinner. Yeah. In the same yep. room, and he strategically sits yeah. closer to the buffet. That's the level he's on. Um, it's Mike, really? Yeah, it's Michael Hibbard. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Course, Piggy, right. Piggy yeah. Hibbard. Yeah, he, he does look like sometimes he's got a spare tire. Um, <laughs> but no, he, he is very good on the on the, on the the tooth. Is that the expression? I think so. He's good on the tooth. Let's make it an expression. Yeah, let's say already. it. Um, th- well, as th- long as he's left what's good, we don't really care, do we? So yeah. that's the main thing. <laughs> one, more, one more hub uh, question that I do have. Um, mm-hmm. Now... Long trips, I can imagine the Ashes would be one from an Australian point of view where you take a squad of about 20 would be a guess. I dare say two or three of those guys won't play for the whole uh, eight, nine weeks you're away. Yeah. Um, how, so we're going to have a similar similar thing here with 40 guys on, on, on the list. There's no VFL, no reserves game. There's going to be potentially 10 guys that don't play a game of football up, up, up here. What sort of stuff did, um, obviously, captains at the time, Ponting, Clark, um, your coaches, uh, what did they do to keep those guys involved and make them, uh, when they were ready, because we might need um, one of them coming to a pretty critical game, e.g. Braden Proust this week. Um, what sort of stuff did you use to make sure they stayed on board? Yeah, it was pretty difficult, actually. I, I sort of spent a lot of time 
uh, being a professional drinks waiter along with Brad <laughs> yep. Haddon for most of that time. <laughs> yep. So we we actually went through together, bonded quite nicely, and went through a really hard fitness regime. Yep. And then had an absolute outlet, which was uh, you could call it a bender if you like, I suppose. Yep. Um, which was probably just to get that release away from and frustrations and stuff. It's really difficult to try and maintain you know, your skills up to the critical level because, as we know in sport, we don't like to think that there isn't favouritism, but unfortunately those in the 11 or those in the, the 18 or 22 do get preferential, preferential treatment. Yeah, it does. It does nat- um, naturally happen like that. Yep. It, it does. So you sort of work, you work as a little sort of independent group to make sure you... Um, you know, you look after yourselves. We had some different people, of course, on those tours. You know, Stuart McGill was an interesting one. So, <laughs> yep. um, or, you know, I, I guess in terms of cricket, you know, there were, there is that sort of, uh, you know, work hard and then play hard sort of mentality back in the day. You can't really do that anymore. Yep. Um, you, can't, you can't do that in hub life, nor with AFL either. So I think it's just more about really bonding as friendships and working out, you know what they like. The other thing I found that when there was often partners there, yep, and you're and you're an outside player, I found it difficult to break into you know those sort of communities. And I often found that when you were a player, it was tough to go up to the senior players and spend time with their family or get to know them. So that, that was one of the hard things which I found. Which yeah, you might find with the youngsters, they generally try, they generally stick to close to their girlfriend or their partner yep. um, and become quite insular there. So, yeah, that's a little tip that if you can break that down, that's a, a win for everyone. So just being as welcoming as possible would be the, the key one there. Cause 100%. I, yeah. maybe, you can, maybe you can take your bike out, mate, and make it <laughs> – maybe you can strap them on the back. I don't know. You've got your bike up there. You're rolling around up there. Well, I, I am concerned there, there was a little point there with guys sticking with their families. Angus hasn't been seen since Danielle made her trip up. <laughs> um, so he could potentially see some more no. people, Angus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good yeah. one, Gorny. See, that's, that's Hailbury, you see, right there. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Where are you? Are you, are you mentor and grammar? No, no, I went to St. Beads. I was a uh, Catholic St. Beads. boy, yeah, but right. uh, my, my son goes to Howbury. Oh, He's in year eight. Getting uh, a good education. Yeah. That's what we love. <laughs> yeah, it's, I can't, I can't uh, fault it at all. It's been amazing. Not out of Keysborough. Right. Yeah, he goes to Keysborough, yeah. Uh, we might end up with a bogan. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. Oh, you don't, don't listen to Max. He doesn't know anything. All right. Well, there's some good pedigree out of there. King oh, Brothers are turning it on as aren't well. Aren't they? Um, Absolutely. It's a, it's a factory. Absolutely. All right, what I've what I've got for you, Hodge, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot. Um, uh, this name won't mean anything to you, but Laurie O'Shea, uh, every single year, he's a he's a Melbourne supporter. He donates uh, a bathroom renovation and a toilet every single year to the Melbourne auction. <laughs> just a toilet. Just what a, a toilet. Just a, he donates a toilet as well. On your um, and he does it every single year. And uh, lots of times, the players get involved. Angus has played a round of golf uh, yeah. for a lot of money. People yeah, pay yeah, big yeah, bucks yeah. for that. RMG Royal Melbourne Golf Course. Is yeah, the so they pay big, me, so. yeah, so they pay big money for that. Angus is actually putting his hand up to play chess. Yep, I'm a chess whiz as yeah, well. So, I'm yeah. not sure he paid for the golf. His father's a member there. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. So I'm a member there as well. Don't worry about that, old you. I'm, yeah, I'm but paid you're a member. member there, but, you, but your father pays for your membership that's is what he's true. trying to say. That's yes. not true. Don't you spread that rumour because that'll, that'll be hard for me to live down. Um, do you, as a, as a Melbourne supporter and wanting this club to grow and keep growing financially, would you have anything you'd like to donate, potentially your time or um, I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure you've got a ripping uh, IPL sign T-shirt or something? I'd be more than happy to I, – I, I was actually thinking about what I could actually donate and I, I hustled through a few items and I came across – my most prized possession, and you believe it or not, it's not the baggy green. Yeah, what is it? It's, it's it's the number. It's the 1994 number 46 jersey for the Melbourne Footy Club. Wow. Yeah, right. And, and I went through the history of players yep. that have worn the number 46. Uh, Austin Bradkey's got it at the moment, which yep. is pretty cool. But in 1995, <laughs> Adam Williamson. Yep. 1996, Alan Nash, Benjamin Doherty in 2001, and Dale Carson. Yep. Can't say that that jersey has got a long history of success, <laughs> so I'm not going to donate that because it won't fetch any money at all. Yeah. 
But <laughs> I will certainly hustle up something of a lesser value, which is some form of cricket uh, memorabilia, and happily donate it to the Melbourne Football Club uh, uh, for their efforts to try and raise as much money as they can and continue success for sure. Ah, uh, you're a good man, Bradley. Unreal, That's exactly what we wanted to hear. Thanks, mate. Um, we do have trivia for you, so you won't go home empty-handed if you get some of these questions right. Um, You're right. <laughs> okay. uh, and also, we, d- we do want to say we are understanding you're potentially a uh, Bush Rangers coach in a week or two. Don't want to jump on any uh, things that haven't been done then, but I know you're in the running. Um, and you've got some genuine talent there with uh, Pekoski, McHurg, uh, Harvey. Um, so hopefully you do get that job. But let's go to the trivia. Right did, you, did you just throw that in there? I just threw that in there to let everyone know that I like cricket. There we go. Um, Thank you. Who, who handed you that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm desk? a strong cricket fan. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, New Zealand, but we'll go. Oh, um, why don't you tweet about it, Max? We'll leave that oh. there. <laughs> All right, first question. I have seen that before, yes. His tweets are shocking. <laughs> shocking. I agree with that. It's hundred thousand. There's no more platform than self-promotion than the social media. Yep. And Max, you are a master <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. We digress. <laughs> All right. Which former MFC player slash board member is in the news this week for uh, being scammed forty was buying a new puppy and instead he gave some money to the dark the dark net? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. He, he wore number thirty six. Melbourne Football Club player board member? player Fire? and board member. Now he is not neither. Number 36, I'm trying to think. I'd know Back it. in the day, no I idea. think no, Alan Jarrett was number 42. Shane Zantuck, he was 36. Uh, not, yeah, I don't think Shane Zantuck's board member quality. Nah, not that old. Um, <laughs> this is a there was a real... The I tried to throw him early and I thought... I thought uh, Johnny Fidge? Johnny Fidge was number 36. You're getting the good 36s. I might not, he might not even be 36. Is it Andrew Leoncelli? He was 36, wasn't he? Oh, uh, no, 34, Andrew Leon Charlie. Hang on a second. We'll agree to disagree. <laughs> Let, I'll send this one upstairs to the we'll, we'll DRS. Send it up. We'll, we'll check that. We'll check. We'll go to question two. We'll come back to that. Tell you what, I wouldn't mind Andrew Leon Charlie's cash. He's on fire. Yes, correct. Well, <laughs> well he's, he's, losing, an, he's an, losing five grand. Enough to give five grand to the dark net. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Which player has played uh, Melbourne f- for the Melbourne Football Club and Test Cricket? Uh, Max Walker. Yeah, there's Bang. two. If you can get the second, I'll let, I'll let you off for the first one. Well, it's me. No, you didn't. You didn't play Mel. Did you say for you? Max I played for in the reserves for the Demons. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it in. That goes straight in. Brad Hodge. What were you? A little forward pocket? Yeah, it's forward pocket. The only I played one game. Yep. And and injured my knee the following Tuesday because Stephen Tingo absolutely poleaxed me at training. <laughs> That's unlike Stephen Tingo. <laughs> and I was out for ten weeks and never played again. <laughs> oh. and well, I played one game at uh, what is it with Noble now. Yeah. Uh, it was a shocking game. It was horribly wet, and pretty much the highlight of the whole game was when Kieran Spawn elbowed me in the head. Which, <laughs> you know, I I just remember Kieran Spawn's name ever after that. So yep. that was probably the highlight. What what could have and, been? And playing with Rodney Grinter, of course, but he never fired up. He didn't punch anyone, so I was. Upset. Bit flat on that. Yeah, stay, yeah. stay, yeah. stay, stay clear from Roddy Grinter. Um, here's a, this is my third cricket question, and probably a doozer. Um, recently delisted by the Melbourne Football Club, we drafted a kid from GWS who was the captain of the Australian Under 19 cricket side. Do you know who it is? Uh, Tomlinson. Nah, it's a doozer as well. Oh. Pat, Pat McKenna. Pat, Pat, McKenna. Didn't play again. McKenna. Apologies. Right. I should, well, that was too hard. I'm going to give you that anyway. That's all right. I should know that. <laughs> who, was the, who was the highest draft picked out of the Brayshaw brothers? Angus, Andrew, and Hamish. Now, it's not going to be... I just want you to take a second, Oji, because it's not who you think it is. Because uh, <laughs> I know the, the knee-jerk reaction yeah, will be to go... No, I reckon it's yeah, your brother from Frio. Yeah, yeah. Andrew. That's good. good. Ding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And last question. We had Jack Trengrove on the show earlier. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, um, he got replaced as captain. Who did he get replaced as captain by? Uh, Nathan Jones. Nathan yeah. Jones is right. See, the trick there was maybe Jack Grimes, because but Grimesy stayed on as captain. Uh, was you the know, trick. I got a, it's an interesting thing about Nathan. He lives just in Black Rock here. Yeah. And the local greengrocer here 
says that Nathan is the barometer of how the demons are going. <laughs> yep. If you lose on the weekend, <laughs> yeah. he never sees him to come in and get his green roses and stuff. <laughs> when he wins, he's there front and center every day. <laughs> oh, that sounds you can, um, you can probably see Jonesy's house from where you are now. It's He's got a palace, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, he, oh, well, he's a palace, yeah. He yeah. lives. He's about five blocks from me. Yeah, right. So, you can, def- um, you can definitely see it. Genuine palace. Yeah, it's, it's massive. Yeah, yeah, it's big, big joint. All right. Good man, Hodgie. Thanks for joining us. No, um, it was a pleasure. Yeah. I uh, wish everyone the best. Hope uh, hope it all goes well in hub life and, and demons march their way to a few more victories and see you in the finals. Legend, I might I might bid for that cricket merch, whatever it is as well. Yeah, I better, better get into the backyard and try and find something. <laughs> hustled in the, the vault somewhere. Beautiful. Good man. Thanks, mate. Welcome. See ya. That was easily uh, one of our best Melbourne supporters. No, I don't want to shame the other Melbourne supporters we've had. Um, we shouldn't do that because we love all the guests. Not many of them have a double, a double uh, century uh, Australian test match. And that's not all their fault. No. I mean, maybe they were Victorian and weren't allowed the chance uh, to get into the Test 11. Um, no, it's another show, Captain's Run. Went a little bit over today. Um, I know we lose viewers after about 35... Viewers or listeners? One listeners. of the two. After about 35 minutes, I'm trying to cut it down, but Gibson's segment just goes for way too long. I so know, we need to sort that out. They're um, all good guests, though. We, we yeah. love them on, and yeah. uh, look forward to the next week. Good man.